Hi folks, Autodesk just pushed out some really useful new cam hole and drilling features. Let's take a look. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. The new features are under geometry. We've got the ability under hole mode to select faces, diameter range, and a containment boundary. So what does this really mean? Where is it helpful? Number one reason is spotting your holes. Take a job shop job or a quick part like this that you wanna spot all your holes in. Go to drilling, we'll pick our spot drill. And under geometry, what we can now do is say diameter range 0.1 to 0.4 gets us every single hole selected right away. I don't have to click multiple holes, choose select same diameter, the stuff that you used to do. The even better way to use this will be to set our heights for a spot drill. So usually what I'll do is I'll leave the top height as hole top, and then bottom height I'll set as hole top with a negative offset, say 40 thousandths of an inch. That allows you to actually use this setup, even if all of your holes aren't coplanar, it'll still just spot 40 thousandths below the top of wherever that hole is located. And then right click, store as template, and I'll call this point 1875 spot template. And now all I've got to do on the next part is right click, create from template, spot template, generate the toolpath, you're done. That's a win. But the other new feature of being able to use containment zones is really fascinating to me. Take a look at this part. It's one of the Saunders mini pallets that we make. It's got a bunch of holes. So if you're doing anything like this where you care about the ability to measure tools, to break up the processes, or maybe it's tapping and you don't want to wear your tap out, you want to be able to check it. In this current version, we're doing the diameter range. We'd get the same results if we did select same diameter where Fusion bounces around. There's no apparent logic to how it runs this toolpath. And so here's what can happen. If we're partway through this toolpath. Look at the holes that we've drilled and that are remaining. It's pretty frustrating if at this point you break a drill or you wanna swap out to a new drill because you've gotta then go in and individually select a number of holes. So being able to use a sketched containment zone could help here because in my opinion, it's easier to create a sketch that would wrap around the areas that have undrilled holes than it is to go through tediously and individually pick holes. But here's the even better way. Before you even do this, break your holes up into sections. So all I've done here in the CAD space is created a sketch with three rectangles. You can space them however you see fit and it doesn't have to be three, it could be more or less. And now in the cam workspace, I'm using this containment boundary I'll expand the sketches and I'll turn the light bulb on for sketch eight. And I can now pick that sketch. It's gonna limit the number of holes to anything. Let's get rid of that three eighth inch hole there just to show we're only drilling the quarter inch holes. And it's gonna drill those out, but it's only going to stay in this area. And so again, very useful for tapping, for drilling, being able to swap tools out. Here's the other thing. A lot of the machine controllers that have tool life management, they won't trigger a flag until the operation is complete. Meaning, let's say you only want to drill 2,000 holes with a drill. And if we go back into edit geometry, you can see one of the other new features is that Fusion is telling us in the bottom right that there are 43 holes selected. So if the max holes is 2,000, but let's say that tap had already tapped 1,983 holes. Well, it really only has 17 holes left. But if you went ahead and drill this whole plate with probably 150 holes, your tool life management software generally isn't going to kick in until it finishes that, which means we'd go 1983 plus you know, 125 holes, which means we would go 100 holes past the limit that we wanted to. And there's just a peculiarity of how the tool life management software works where it tends to not want to stop in the middle of an operation because it doesn't know what's happening or how to really handle that. Something that's quite frustrating in my opinion, but this is the easy answer. 
break this up into separate cam operations that gives the tool life management software a chance to say, hey, this tool is at its limit, it gives you a chance to check whether you're using a boring head or a reamer or a drill bit or a tap, inspect the tool, improve the process reliability, and give yourself a better chance at making a better part. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Head over to NYC CNC for all sorts of different Fusion 360, CAD, CAM, post-processor, and more tutorials. Otherwise, take care, folks. See you next Friday. <laughs>